Welcome, traders, to the final uh, live analysis session of 2020 uh, with me, Patrick Munley. If you can hear me and you can see the uh, screen, the welcome screen, just type a Y on the chat box. Good stuff. Okay. Uh, before we jump into uh, today's charts, as always, we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer, and most importantly, with regards to today's session, uh, any views expressed by me today are solely mine. <clears throat> They're not indicative or representative of those of Ticknell UK or Ticknell Europe Limited. Uh, for those of you who are here for the first time, just a brief introduction to myself. Um, after I graduated from university, I joined a city a PLC consulting firm. After a couple of years learning the ropes, I left with some colleagues and went on to co-found and successfully exit a consulting startup post a merger late 2004. I then moved on to explore my passion for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading or more appropriately day gambling uh, the S&P 500 and after some Early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, uh, the beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to average down into losing positions, essentially giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure financial hit. I'd say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience as an understatement. Uh, it was at this stage that I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for about 18 months to two years uh, was a period during which I upped not just my technical game with respect to researching, developing a trading strategy that suited my personality, extensively back testing that strategy and forward testing it and underpinning it all with a rigorous risk management approach. But really most importantly during that period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated uh, individual focused on financial gains to becoming uh, purely process-orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I've stopped focusing <clears> on <throat> what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback uh, from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset and you understand the true nature of trading simply being a numbers game in which you're uh, playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or strings of trades. Uh, my focus is on the next 100 trades because I know that if I focus on excellent in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered annual uh, profitable returns since 2008. The uh, performance figures you see on your screen are since 2013, and they represent uh, my, uh, invest, my managed account service, uh, because since 2013, I've been managing investor capital via uh, a managed accounts service, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Uh, since 2010, I've also mentored over 100 private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. I've also consulted to numerous brokers and trading education brands, contributing written content, webinars, and live presentation content, a range of topics, from market analysis to trading strategy development and execution. In addition to my fund management and private mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert for TICMA, providing market and trade analysis on a daily basis through the TICMA blog. You can actually sign up to receive updates with respect to my analysis uh, through the blog on the, uh, the TICMA platform. My other um, passion project is as head of trading and trader education 
for a leading trading education brand called fxcareerswap.com. We offer development and funding to retail trading talent. At FX Career Swap, we don't just develop retail traders' uh, market and trading strategy knowledge. We work on mindset development through a structured program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. And for those who are interested in learning more about what we're doing at FX Career Swap, there's some contact information on the screen. And uh, if you want to follow up, and uh, I'm sure the guys will provide you with whatever information you require. So that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. And now let's jump into the charts. I'm gonna start do something a little bit different uh, to start this week. <clears throat> uh, these charts I'm gonna share with you are provided by uh, CityFX, their uh, technical team. And there's some interesting observations here and we're really looking uh, you know, we're on the much higher timeframes. You can see on the screen uh, represents, uh, each candle represents a year, worth of data. So um, what we've got here are basically yearly candlesticks. Now, obviously you're not going to necessarily be focused on, uh, on trading the yearly candlesticks, but it's important to have an understanding or, or, or certainly um, be aware of where we are from a much, uh, much bigger perspective because that can help inform your trading as, uh, as we go into, into the new year. And certainly, an interesting observation from City is that we're sitting on this um, yearly trend line that's uh, that's held now on three occasions, <coughs> and we're actually about to post an outside reversal, a bullish outside reversal year in the euro dollar. And they note that in under similar circumstances, if we look back here in 1985, uh, that that outside reversal candle was actually uh, the low for, um, for a number of years and led to a move higher of over 105% in, uh, in the euro dollar. And so uh, currently we're trading a little bit higher um, than the 120, 140 on here. The, this uh, slide deck is, uh, is about a week old, I think, but the observation is still valid. And certainly we want to see where we close because if we close at or above current levels, then this is just giving further um, credence to this, uh, this outside reversal and, uh, and could be the start of, uh, of quite a significant trend move in terms of the Euro. And obviously the inverse to the Euro is the dollar index. And on the screen, you can see the dollar index going back to 1971 here. And you note the cycles um, that, uh, that the dollar has a tendency to trade in. And certainly in terms of secular bear markets in the dollar, which um, you know, it's conceivable that we are entering one, um, that these bear markets have a tendency, or certainly historically, have, um, have traded in seven year increments. So we could be in the first year, it's feasible, of a, of a seven year cycle in terms of a downdraft with respect to uh, the dollar index. Also note here on the year, oh, this is the, uh, the yearly chart again, we're getting a big outside reversal candle in the dollar index and we've got the stochastic rolling over as well and looking like it's going to uh, negatively diverge. So this again, adding weight to the idea that uh, that we could see a rollover here in terms of uh, in terms of the dollar the dollar index. So closing at or well, again this when when they took this screenshot this uh, we were trading ninety seven four we're trading below ninety now in terms of the dollar index. So again adding weight to this idea that uh, that we could be in for a uh, another a, a decent leg lower here in terms of the dollar index. Next chart is the. Bloomberg uh, Asian dollar index, so it's the dollar versus basket of Asian currencies. And again, you get the picture here, we're getting a big bullish outside reversal candle. And um, you can see that the last time we had one of those uh, in the late noughties, um, this led to, to further upswing in terms of um, Asian currencies versus the dollar. What we're looking at now is a chart of the Australian dollar. And you can see for the the pin bar aficionados amongst us that uh, we're putting in a pretty decent K 
candle there in terms of uh, in terms of the Aussie. We're actually trading a bit higher now, uh, just coming off the seventy, uh, just trading above seventy six now in terms of the Australian dollar. <coughs> and what we can read in terms of the this price action is, um, as they note here, that there's the a, a possibility now of of an extension through to eighty one twenty five and then eighty nine fifty. Uh, we'll take a look at uh, the weekly charts in a minute in terms of targets, but um, there is the potential that we are entering now a, uh, a bullish phase in terms of uh, in terms of the Australian dollar, and this is underpinned by the Australian dollar's uh, counter or, or favourite proxy really for Australian dollar strength, and that's the uh, copper market. And you'll see the observation here and the similarities in terms of price action where copper printed its lows in the uh, late 90s, early noughties, and the big run up we got, and you can see the similarities in terms of the price action here. So if copper is going to take off um, in, in, you know, if, if we're going to see a bullish extension in terms of copper, then we can expect that to take these commodity currencies with it, certainly the Aussie and the Kiwi would, uh, would, would be benefiting from, uh, from such a move. Uh, the next chart is Bitcoin and uh, the implications of this chart are, as they say here, relatively straightforward. If we if we've taken out these prior highs now, we're trading at all uh, new all-time highs in terms of Bitcoin, and uh, you can see even in, in a basic fashion that uh, that if we trade just within the channel here, that the scope for uh, for Bitcoin to uh, elevate in value quite significantly. Uh, this is uh, this is a an instrument that I've only really started tracking this year. Um, with the well, once we got the institutional involvement in terms of uh, the options market, op futures and options trading on the CME, that added another level of liquidity to, to Bitcoin. And so it's trading in a far more technical fashion now. But certainly we can see the scope here with a breakout uh, to trade into the, the top side of that channel. Um, so that's one to, to keep an eye on. And, um, and here we have the S&P 500. And uh, we're going to post a bullish outside year on a close above uh, 3,248, trading above there at the moment. And you can see the implications of these, uh, these bullish outside years in terms of the S&P, where we could see quite a, uh, quite a decent extension higher. And even if we just look at the basic channel here, we could be trading up towards uh, 7,500 in, uh, in the coming years. So again, watch where we close um, come the uh, 31st, but it's, it's looking like a big bullish outside reversal, which should then see prices extend into next year. Last but not least, the NASDAQ breaking out, and uh, you can see on the screen here uh, the implications of uh, the Nasdaq breaking out, where we could actually see a decent run higher um, in terms of uh, in terms of tech. Obviously, this year, um, with respect to uh, COVID, we have seen money pour into the tech market in terms of this work from home uh, thesis, and um, and obviously tech has benefited significantly from that. But uh, there could now be a meaningful. Uh, rotation higher in terms of the technical setup as well here, as uh, as you can see on the screen. Um, so those are just some charts to to keep in mind. Um, you can you can look at these uh, through the recording, which uh, which will be posted uh, to the Tickmo blog later, and uh, and screenshot these to have uh, as reference. So um, in terms of where we stand, let's check in with a few of these charts, key charts. Dollar index sitting right at the yearly S3 and this internal trend line. Um, so we're watching, see if we can hold here in and around current levels. If we fail to hold the S3 and the trend line, then look for a move to test the equal legs. So <clears throat> when I say, equal legs, what I mean is that we have uh, an equality objective versus this structure, which would see us trade down into this 8742, uh, sorry, 8742 area. Um, 
my preferred well the, the the thesis i'm working with at the moment is that we we could ho we hold here at the s3 um january is seasonally a very strong period for the dollar um and if we can hold these in and around current levels i think we could see a pull back back into the 92 area for making that run for the 87. However, if we can't hold uh, the current support, the, the 89, 75 area, then watch for a test of 87, um, 42. And we've got the Euro dollar, <coughs> obviously the inverse of um, the dollar index sitting right at its yearly R3, 122, 49, just trading into that area. And we have the trend line just above coming in at 123. So I'm keeping a very close eye on those levels. Uh, obviously, if the dollar index can hold the 89.70, then I would expect a uh, potential for a bit of a pullback here in terms of the euro dollar. I'm not, not suggesting that we're going to see anything sizable here, but certainly we could get a retest of the 120 from above. And then that could be an opportunity to, uh, to look to engage on the long side, targeting the quality objective for the euro at, uh, at 128.60. Sterling, obviously, we're uh, we're seeing some benefit from the the Brexit news. Music is uh, is pretty positive at the moment, and uh, I'd be looking for a move into one thirty seven initially. Any pullbacks then to to hold the one thirty four, one thirty five, because what we have with Sterling in terms of the quality objective versus this structure would be a target up at one forty seven. And if we just look. <coughs> At the uh, the last leg up here, this was the post Brexit low, um, and we can see that we have a uh, symmetry swing target at one thirty eight forty. So pay attention to how we trade in that area. If we do extend and we get the Brexit deal, I think um, we are setting up somewhat here for a uh, buy the rumor, sell the fact type trade. So I'd be looking at uh, this 138, 139 area to as an area where we can see a pullback. Um, but like I say, whilst we then hold 135, we really want to be thinking uh, about uh, tests of 140, 143 as the, um, as the next upside objective in terms of sterling. Um, let's just actually jump onto the daily timeframes here now and uh, just take a look at the, the technical setups as I see them developing. <laughs> I think we're in the process, well, we'll see if we can hold this, uh, this 89 area of completing this five wave cycle. If, if, we don't, if, if there is no support there, then you know that what I'm looking at is that 8740. And you can see we've actually now, yeah, but this would be trading very technically in terms of a channel as well. Um, so watch the 8720 to 8740 area if we can't defend these current uh, these current levels in terms of the dollar index. <clears throat> and uh, like I said, with the euro really paying close attention to this 123 area, I believe I've, I think that this is likely going to be an area where we see some profit taking. And like I say, looking for a pullback then back into this uh, this 120 area as support. <clears throat> Sterling chart. So, uh, like I say, watch 138, 139. Um, the trend channel resistance doesn't come in at the moment until 141. So if in lower liquidity next week, less, less participants in the market, and we do get a deal at the last minute here, then we could see you know, prices extend in a, a more erratic fashion, but I'd be expecting the channel to hold. We've got a, we're, a bunch of these instruments are all trading um, within pretty well-defined channels now. And... Um, I'm looking for uh, looking for a pullback in terms of uh, the Aussie here. We're uh, we're just uh, we're looking for that um, 77 cents level. That's an equality objective versus uh, this wave one measured from our wave four low. So watch how we trade at 77 in terms of the Aussie, and then if we do if we do see a spike higher, uh, 78.30 is where the trend channel resistance comes in at the moment. Kiwi. <clears throat> um, we've traded through the uh, the equality objective in terms of uh, the wave uh, wave one equality measure for the Kiwi. I'm looking for a test of uh, of 72 um, on the upside here to, to potentially see a pullback. What you'll note with a bunch of these instruments is we're seeing some pretty significant divergence develop, and like I say, these obviously 
really from from tomorrow onwards through till uh, the beginning of January, the, uh, the liquidity in these markets is going to be uh, pretty dire. And so we can see moves get a little bit erratic like we saw um, around the turn of the year in 2018. Um, so be very careful if you're, uh, if you're in these markets over the next couple of weeks, um, so, uh, because the, with the liquidity issues, we, we, can, uh, we can see some pretty erratic moves. The, uh, the S&P 500, this one is just shy of the long-term target that I've been looking at, this uh, 37, 31 area. Now, US stimulus is likely going to, or they're going to try and pass something in the, um, in the Congress. And, uh, and I think we could be setting up for a bit of a, uh, by the rumor, sell the fact type scenario where they pass the stimulus bill and we, uh, we see a bit of a pullback in terms of equity. So watch how we trade at this 37, 30 area. Now, again, if we extend through there, then the, um, the next upside objective is going to be the ascending trend line resistance, which doesn't come in just shy of 4,000, so another 300 handles higher in terms of, uh, in terms of the S&P. Gold, <coughs> nice pattern setting up here in terms of gold and uh, corrected move into this trend line resistance at the 1950. Pay attention to how price responds there. You can be looking on the intraday timeframes, four hour hourly timeframes, see if we get reversal patterns there in terms of gold uh, for a pullback. And then we'll see if buyers are, are, going, are actually going to step in here if we've completed um, the, the correction here. So we're looking at A, B, C. So if we, uh, if we take out this trend line resistance, we don't see any supply in the market in and around those levels. Then we can expect gold to, uh, to be breaking out through the 1968 area. And this will be the initial um, first wave, obviously, of a, um, of a much more significant move in terms of gold. So really want to see how we trade at the trend line resistance, because we could have another leg uh, to the downside here in terms of being a more complex corrective pattern. But at the moment, uh, really pay attention to that, uh, that trend line resistance. Um, in terms of trades that I, I'm looking at at the moment, the, <coughs> the only one I'm looking at is this CAD yen, looking for a move down to test this trend line resistance with this bearish rejection, the uh, VWAP rolled over and we've got this inside candle. So looking for a breakdown through the lows here, 1890 to see if we can get a move to test 8050. And um, what we've got obviously is this potential double top scenario here versus this prior high. And like I say, you can see we've got some nice um, momentum divergence. So price, uh, we could see a more meaningful pullback. We'll have to see how we trade at the trend line in terms of the CAD yen. Um, so with respect to the charts, it's uh, short but sweet today. Um, obviously we're heading into the holiday period. And uh, I, for one, will, uh, will be far less engaged in the markets um, over the, the next two weeks and uh, will be coming back uh, ready, to, ready to go for the um, first webinar, uh, first live analysis session will be on uh, Thursday, the 7th of January. Are there any questions? Would anyone like me to take a look at the chart? Uh, open to, uh, to taking requests. I can see we've got uh, Charlie, the FTSE. Let's have a look at the FTSE. Um, one second. Hmm. Try this again. Here we go. Let's see. So again, um, with the FTSE, you're kind of in that, uh, that same scenario with respect to, to sterling, really. Um, if we get, say, if, you know, if there is a Brexit deal announced, then we can expect prices to, to extend higher. Um, if we, in terms of a measured move, the next uh, technical target 
on a versus this prior swing would be uh, 6,800, uh, the 127 extension of this, uh, of this prior swing. And then um, through there, you could, uh, you could actually be starting to think about the quality objective, which comes in at 72.41. So uh, you want to see how we trade. Uh, again, it, a deal, a Brexit deal announced, then you're going to see prices uh, elevate and, uh, and you've got some technical targets to look at there, the 127 extension of that price swing, then the 161 extension and the equality legs, uh, the equal leg objective coming in at 71.62 and 72.40. If, uh, if we don't get a Brexit deal, um, then uh, you could be thinking in terms of this as a wedge and a, uh, a failure here would see us um, see us pretty quickly trading back at uh, at 62.46 and then back into these prior highs. So look, thinking in terms of 60.39, 61.23. Does that make sense, Charlie? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll take a look at that, Charlie, and come back to you tomorrow. Any other questions? Okay, if there aren't any questions, I will uh, I'll wrap this up here. And thanks very much for uh, joining uh, these sessions this year. And I look forward to working with you all in the in the new year um, and I wish you all a happy holidays. Thanks very much.